The Mac version of Metro Exodus has come into station. Today we're going to have an in-depth look at how it performs on Intel and Apple M1 machines. If you've been following me for a while, you know that Metro Exodus was spotted for Mac on SteamDB in about mid-2020. This was a strong hint that 4A games were working on a native version. Metro Exodus is a big deal for Mac. It features more advanced technology under the hood and is more graphically advanced than the prior games in the franchise. With more detailed open-ended locations, more advanced weather effects, great gun animations and significant improvements for facial animation and motion capture. While it's two years old now, it's still one of the best narrative-driven shooters out there and a good example of how well a developer can optimize a blockbuster AAA game for Mac. The last big AAA game on Mac was probably Borderlands 3 and that was one of the worst and most lazy ports I'd ever seen. It had embarrassing performance even on some of the most high-end Macs, and if you played it under Windows 10 Bootcamp, it would get, well, double the performance. Unlike that game, 4A games have obviously taken their time to optimize Metro Exodus with care on Mac. But don't be thinking you can play it on every Mac out there. No, 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 no. For example, my Intel 13-inch MacBook Pro from 2019 has an integrated graphics chip and is not supported. It crashes to the desktop when you try to launch the game. Metro Exodus may require a powerful Mac with a dedicated graphics card, but at least the ones that are fully supported play it pretty well. Metro Exodus is an x86-64 application with Metal API support. It also seems to have support for Molten VK. Molten VK is a software library which allows Vulkan applications to run on top of Metal. That said, I can't confirm if the game is actively using Molten VK at this time as it's not directly linked to the game's macOS folder. But that's getting a bit technical. The previous games in the series ran under the OpenGL API. Sadly, Exodus is not fully optimized for Apple M1 with ARM64 support. So if you play on that platform, the game runs through Rosetta 2. But as you'll come to find, it's pretty playable on these machines. My 5K iMac has an 8GB graphics card. At 2K resolution and medium settings, the game gets around 45fps. I prefer a frame rate closer to 60 for a first person shooter, so 1080p was the way to go for me. At 1080p high settings, the game typically gets over 60 FPS. However, there are some scenes that will lower the FPS into the mid 40s. For example, during some cutscenes, when multiple characters appear on screen, or when you are in a high location looking down upon the open world, and sometimes random effects hurt the frame rate, especially the smoke from trash can bonfires. Weird. There is also noticeable screen tearing, and every Mac display currently is 60 Hz, so playing over 60 FPS is not really a benefit unless you have an external monitor with a higher refresh rate. I therefore prefer to play with VSync enabled, which means the frame rate is locked to the refresh rate of the display, so you won't get over 60 FPS, and it eliminates screen tearing. I also tested the game with only 8GB of memory on this iMac. You see, Metro Exodus recommends playing with 16GB of memory. Playing with only 8GB, however, made absolutely no difference to the performance. I did a comparison with the same graphical settings on macOS Big Sur and Windows 10. Windows 10 is practically locked to 60 FPS always. While as I said in some scenes for macOS, the frame rate will go down into the 40s. Weirdly though, on Windows, even with VSync disabled, the frame rate would not go above 60 FPS. 
4A games have done a great job optimizing the Intel Mac port here. And it's close to the Windows performance which uses DirectX 11 or 12. For many other AAA games, Windows is usually a lot more ahead. The Mac version is also missing some in-game graphical options as seen on Windows, such as hair works, tessellation and shading rate. Shading rate is actually enabled by default, I believe, as you can see them in the game's config file, and tessellation is set to zero. Adjusting any of these specific settings doesn't seem to affect the game at all still, which is weird. Hairworks is probably the most noticeable that's missing as it enables higher quality fur and hair on certain creatures. I thought maybe it was just added into the ultra or extreme graphical preset, but this just isn't the case. For Apple M1 based machines, the performance is actually quite similar to playing the game on a PS4 or Xbox One. Maybe a tiny bit better actually. Anyway, at 1080p resolution and medium settings, the frame rate is typically always over 30 FPS. Sometimes it goes up to 40, 45 or even 50 in more closed environments or if the world is covered in fog, for example. During gunfights, it's typically in the low 30s. If you play this game on Crossover 20, the game will run under DirectX 11 and it looks to get around 20 to 25 FPS at the same settings. And it has considerable more stuttering than the native Intel version. If you want a more consistent frame rate, I suggest adjusting your settings to the following. Play at 900p resolution in either the medium or high preset. Choose medium if you want a higher frame rate and high if you prefer nicer graphics. Also, make sure VSync is disabled on M1 Max as you'll lose more frames with it on and turn motion blur to low. You could also open the game in low resolution mode from the game's root folder. This won't really do that much. You might get like one extra frame, but look, it's better than nothing. For a tiny, tiny bit more performance, you can disable motion blur from the game's config file in your application support folder by setting the motion blur level and scale number to zero. And you can put foliage shadows to zero too. These define the plant shadows and turning it off will result in little visual loss. With these settings disabled, you'll get a bonus like 1 to 2 FPS. These settings can be changed on an Intel Mac too. For a low-end Mac, this performance is quite frankly amazing. I'd love to know how much better it could be if the game was fully updated for M1 though. Would 1080p high 60 FPS be possible on M1? Or maybe that would be for the next Apple Silicon chipset. Later in the year, the game will benefit from an enhanced edition for next-gen consoles and Windows PC. There is no confirmation yet if this version will be available on Mac. This next-gen version is built for ray tracing capable GPUs, and while this technology is technically supported with the Metal API, some new AMD GPUs on Mac, and Apple Silicon, the current Mac hardware most likely will struggle to enjoy it. So, we'll have to wait and see. Anyway, are you going to play Metro Exodus on your Mac? Have you started playing it? How is it performing for you? Let me know in the comments. I've been super excited to play this game, and I have been counting down the days. I hope you guys appreciate 4A Games bringing it to our platform, as big AAA games like this one are rare on our platform. Hopefully more are inspired by this one. Anyway, leave a like to show your support and subscribe and turn on notifications to stay up to date with everything Apple gaming related. My name's Dewey and thanks for watching.